Hi, my name is Mark Hamilton, and today I'll show you how we can use Synapse ML to create a multilingual search engine from unstructured data in storage. We'll start off by uploading a large quantity of forms to a storage account so we can access it on Synapse. We'll then apply distributed form recognition, a cognitive service integration part of Synapse ML, to extract key information from these forms. We'll standardize and clean up this information with the Synapse ML form ontology learner, and then we'll localize it in a variety of different languages using Synapse ML's distributed translation APIs. Finally, we'll take this information and we'll put it inside a custom search engine and we'll explore this data within a Synapse notebook. All right, so the first step in our journey is going to be to load these forms from storage. We can do this super quickly using the spark.read.binary file API and pass in our storage path with an optional glob at the end. This will very quickly get us a data frame with a column called URL that contains pointers to all the different invoices we have in our storage account. So let's take a look at some of our forms here from Tailwind Traders. We've got a few pieces of metadata up at the top, an itemized breakdown of what was bought, as well as a total and subtotal section. And what we'd like to do in this analysis is figure out this information without actually manually looking at these forms. To understand what's going on in our collection of documents, we can use the Synapse ML integration with the Form Recognition Cognitive Service. Here, in only a few lines, we create an Analyze Invoice Spark ML Transformer. We then apply this to our earlier data frame of URLs. What we receive is a new column of our data frame that contains all of the information that the Cognitive Service found in these particular forms. So you can see here we've got fields for customer address, tax, vendor address, and a whole bunch of other stuff. One of the challenges of working with Cognitive Services, however, is parsing the formats that they return. As you can kind of see, this is a fairly deeply nested structure, and the fields returned here are dynamic. They depend on the actual forms that went in. So what we need to do is take this collection of cognitive service return payloads and turn it into something more amenable to analysis. Here, we're going to use our form ontology learner that's specifically designed for this task. What it'll do is take a data frame of these form recognition payloads and automatically transform it into a nice, simple SQL table that everybody knows and loves that you can just do operations on and work with as if it's a data set that you loaded up from Excel. What I'd like to do next is make this data set a bit easier to work with for international colleagues who don't speak English. In particular, I'd like to localize this description field to a variety of languages that my teammates speak. This is a fairly simple operation with Synapse ML. It's just like the form recognition. We create a translate Synapse ML transformer and pump our data through it. What we then get is a new column on our data frame that contains all of the translations powered by the Cognitive Services. This is all great, but what if a colleague joins that doesn't speak one of the languages we chose to translate to? Well, in order to communicate the information that's held within these forms to this colleague, we're going to need to translate to the universal language, the lingua franca of millennials, emojis, in order to do this, we can't really use a standard text analytics algorithm. We've got to use a bigger hammer. And particularly, this billion parameter hammer, OpenAI's GPT-3 language model. What this language model does is complete sentences. And although you might think that's very restrictive, you can build algorithms out of this core algorithm by prompting it in particular ways. So here, I've prompted it for emoji translation. I've translated two ducks here to two duck emojis three peaches to three peach emojis, a person and a cat to a person and a cat emoji. And the idea is that OpenAI will complete this with hopefully giving our item description here a reasonable emoji translation. As you can see down here, it works just like the other cognitive services. What we get out is a data frame with our emojis appended as a new column of the data frame. And as you can kind of see, these are fairly good emojis. You know, two singing gnomes get translated to a music note with two little hooks on it. So I'd say this is fairly good. And we don't have to just stop here and looking at the data frame. We can also chart this out interactively and see like a breakdown of our spending in terms of all the different items in our collection. So that not only can you read this chart if you speak English, but you can also kind of get the gist of this chart if you don't speak English or don't speak any of the languages we've translated to. 
Finally, what we can do is take all this information and pump this into an Azure search index. This little bit of code here in Synapse ML automatically figures out the right schema of the Azure search index, creates it if it doesn't exist, and pushes all of the data into that search index in parallel in just a single writer line. And with that, we can send this search index requests, we can build a front end on it, and each one of our requests will have all of the information that we just added as part of this analysis. So we've got the emoji here, we've got all the different other fields, and it's ready to go to build a front end. To conclude, I'd like to give some shout outs to some of the amazing developers that made this demo possible. Serena for building forms and translation, Mark for building out some of the GPT-3 analysis, and Kirsi, Panit, and Kyle for making us work flawlessly with Synapse Analytics. Finally, I'll give a shameless plug for Synapse ML's new version that's coming up very soon, version 0.10, with large-scale OpenAI language models, full support for .NET, C-sharp, F-sharp, zero setup demos with MyBinder, and seamless integration with MLflow for simple model deployment and auto-logging. Thanks so much for your attention, and have a great rest of your demo day.